patch three for season two of 2022 on iRacing is out. It's not a large one, but uh, let's see what we got today. Under general, the communication protocol used by the UI has received a version upgrade. Under my account, resolved an iRacing credits display issue where trailing digits were being shown on the my account screen. Under my content, filtering by favorites on the cars page now properly displays recently favorited cars without having to refresh the page. For up next, the existing end time column in the table view has been renamed duration and now supports displaying a duration lapse or total time. And the actual expected end time is now displayed in a tooltip. Under create a race, tooltip descriptions are now available when selecting a restart type. For team racing, tooltips and descriptions of the fair share requirements for team racing have been updated for clarity. For AI racing, fix the grammatical error with the alert for the recommended number of AI drivers. Under results, a new button has been added to the recent results page that allows a user to look up session results via an ID. So only numbers are allowed in this input box to retrieve results. You will otherwise see an alert warning you of your error and the input requirements. If the session ID does not exist, you will see a notification that the ID was not found. And for the paint shop, fix an issue where a particular paint pattern rules are not being applied correctly, causing desired changes not to save. All right, under the simulation, oh, we've got something under net code. Some of the recent extrapolation changes designed specifically to mitigate nose rear collisions have been updated. These latest adjustments are designed to prevent erroneous rear ending predictions and should work better for agile cars that are pulling out to pass or traveling through braking zones and corners. For AI racing, the AI drivers have improved their racing skills with the NASCAR Cup cars. AI drivers have improved their defensive driving techniques at Long Beach. And AI drivers have improved their racing skills at the Oval, just the regular old plain old Oval for Atlanta Motor Speedway. And then the iRacing memory pool consumption for AI racing has been improved, particularly for large and varied car class fields at large tracks. For graphics, some graphics and display related settings have been moved from the app INI file to the renderer INI files. For audio, fix an issue where some vehicle brakes were not generating brake sounds. And for the spotter, fix a grammatical text error and some tire compound changes. Spotter messages for cars. Under the next gen cup cars, drafting drag response is updated. For the ARCA cars, tape has been visually adjusted for race and qualifying garage tape settings. For the Audi RS3, minimum allowable tire pressure has been increased to match the touring car class requirements. For the dirt late models, for all of them, fix the severe suspension issue that could occur when certain setup parameters were in use or a significant collision occurred. For the dirt modified, for all of them, fix the severe suspension issue that it could, okay, it's the same as the dirt late model. But then also for the big block dirt modifieds, oh, I should have read ahead. I racing setups have been updated. They got me. They got me. We don't go over that. All right, global mods, the MX-5 cup. The windshield digits have been removed from the interface model. Fix an issue where the vehicle pedals are missing from the paint shop version of this car model. For the Honda Civic Type R, uh, minimum allowable tire pressure has been increased to match the touring car class requirements. For the iRacing Formula IR04, fix an issue where some attention-seeking crew members for this vehicle would transition into a T-pose when the camera was not focusing on this car. And for the Mercedes F1 car, the new damage model system for preventing suspension hyperextension has been disabled for this vehicle since it does not work correctly with this car's suspension design. Alright, under tracks for Atlanta, a track marshal has been rescued from the jaws of a hungry fire truck. For Imola, fix an issue where a fence was an incorrect dark material. For Barber, the price of this track was recently updated to $14.95 to match comparable results. Ooh, I'm glad I already have that track then. Maybe I got a deal on it. <laughs> Bristol, for the dirt version of Bristol, updated the pit entry area, so driving closely by does not trigger a pit entry. For Charlotte, under the Roval Turtle Curb properties, sausage curbs, have been adjusted for improved physics interactions with vehicles using the new damage model. And also under the Roval, I'm buried some cones. For Nurburgring combined, fix an issue where the standing start grid location was accidentally moved onto the back straight. Uh, for Phoenix, the pit lane opening has been adjusted to prevent an exploit. Oh. And then finally for Watkins Glen, a new flagger platform has been added. The grandstands have been updated, fixed some camera distance visual popping issues with a few environment objects. 
and fix an issue where a chain link fence was opaque. So that's it. Just a little update today. No new damage model for the next gen, which are the current gen, the gen seven cup cars. I thought that was coming soon. That might, I guess they're going to wait for the, uh, the full season next season to come out. So I guess maybe on season three, we'll get that anyways. Yeah. A couple of little changes and fixes. Uh, hope it was informative. Please like favorite, subscribe. Bye.